armed forces of Ukraine began a major operation. A major operation order came to the most important supply routes of the Eastern Front. Fierce clashes are taking place around the R-66 highway. Russia's largest supply route is about to be captured by Ukrainian forces. Critical news keeps coming. With the arrival of shipments to Kiev operations began, combat experts thought that operations would begin within a week, but the attacks began at night. A large number of armored vehicles, military equipment and Ukrainian soldiers took action. With the attacks of Ukrainian artillery units, Russian defense line in the region was broken. If Ukrainian army can take control of the region, Russia will lose the most important point of the Eastern Front. Tension rose considerably. According to the statements, Ukrainian army carried out a large number of shipments to the region in the morning hours. Russian sources said that shortly after, Ukrainian troops entered the R-66 highway. A large number of Ukrainian soldiers took action to seize the surrounding Russian positions. Armored vehicles of Ukrainian army entered the highway. Artillery and rocket launcher units behind Ukrainian defense line are launching successive attacks on Russian headquarters, military equipment and positions in the region. Meanwhile, Ukrainian army quickly seized the area. Russian defensive line was broken. However, it was stated that Russian troops resumed shipments and an increase in the number of Russian soldiers in the region was observed. Russian army may begin to launch attacks to regain control of the region. Because if Ukrainian army takes control of the region, Russia will have taken a big blow. Because it is possible to ship to the entire Eastern Front via the R-66 highway, Ukrainian army wants to create a long corridor by conducting operations in Kremina. In this way, communication between the soldiers of Russian army will be broken. In addition, if shipments continue through this corridor, Russian troops may be surrounded from the south and north. Russian troops are trying every possible way to stop Ukrainian forces. Therefore, the intensity of the conflicts has increased significantly. We mentioned in our previous videos that Ukrainian army wanted to create a corridor on the Eastern Front. In this process, Ukrainian army wants to divide the Eastern Front into two and create new Southern and Northern Fronts on the Eastern Front. In this case, the increasing pressure of Ukraine and Zaporizhia may cause the surrender of Russian soldiers in the south of the Eastern Front, because the created corridor will completely cut off communication on both the east and south facades. Clashes in the region are expected to continue for a while, because, as I said, Russian army will try every way to get back to the highway. Ukrainian army again began targeting Russian supply routes, Kiev wants supply routes to be targeted first. In this way, Ukrainian army can carry out powerful operations with very few casualties. Because on the southern front, the shipment to Russian army had come to a standstill. Therefore, Moscow withdrew from the western side of Kherson in order not to inflict too many casualties in the region. We can say that Ukrainian forces want to implement a similar plan again. The biggest reason for the destruction of ammunition depots on Russian soil can be interpreted as a tax on supply routes. Moscow is aware of this situation. Ukrainian army was expected to launch an attack on the supply lines. However, Kiev gave the order to attack in a very short time. In this process, Russian army wants to increase the number of soldiers on Belarus and send support to the northern region of the Eastern Front. In addition, Russia wants to launch an attack on Ukrainian forces from a different front by launching an attack from Belarusian border. As Ukrainian army and Kiev were aware of the increase in the number of Russian soldiers, a large number of soldiers from the south and west were deployed on the northern front. Possible attacks of Belarusian and Russian soldiers can be stopped by Ukrainian soldiers in the region. The involvement of the Belarusian army in the war will greatly increase the intensity of the war on the territory of Ukraine. Because the countries allied with Ukraine are sending military equipment and defense systems to Ukrainian army to protect their own lands. No Western country has sent troops directly to Ukrainian army. To summarize, Western countries are sending support to Ukrainian army to defend its territory. As you know, United States did not send long-range missile systems to Ukraine. It is stated that with these missiles, the Ukrainian army can directly attack Russian territory. For this reason, 
Western countries declared that they would not directly intervene in the war. However, Belarusian President Lukashenko has repeatedly stated that they can conduct a direct operation against Ukraine. Therefore, the launch of an operation by Belarus may cause greater measures to be taken, especially in Eastern Europe. In this process, Putin and the Kremlin put great pressure on Russian soldiers who joined the army. Inexperienced soldiers to be sent to the front continue their training because they are under great pressure. In this process, we saw many Russian soldiers deserting from the front. In about a month, 4,000 Russian soldiers fled from the front. More than 3,500 Russian soldiers contacted Ukrainian troops to surrender. A similar incident took place on the Belarusian border in the morning today. According to the statements made, Russian soldiers who were trained in Belarusian territory laid down their weapons and fled from Belarus. It was announced that four Russian soldiers took one gun and fled from Belarusian border. Russia and Belarus launched a large-scale investigation to find the soldiers. However, there was a great increase in the number of Russian soldiers fleeing from the front. On the other hand, Ukrainian armed forces reported that a large number of Russian tanks were seized. Moscow wanted to organize a comprehensive attack with armored vehicles. However, all the plans were turned upside down in a short time. Moscow's effort to support his forces certainly did not go as planned. Russian tanks were sent to the front and were soon captured by Kievan forces. According to the statements made, Ukrainian army captured enough heavy Russian battle tanks to form a large tank battalion. Experts announced that Ukrainian army could counterattack with these tanks in a short time. Ukrainian army began to conduct numerous attacks, seizing Russian military equipment. Moscow continues to make major strategic mistakes on the front. Russian forces have been trying to capture both cities for the past four months. Initially, capturing the two cities made strategic sense because it was part of a larger, two-pronged attempt to encircle and trap Ukrainian forces in Donbass. Russian forces were unable to advance south despite some very costly value gains. Moreover, since Ukrainian counteroffensive in the east that shocked Russia and the world in September, Russian forces in the north of the Donbass have been either destroyed or repulsed. The Ukrainians also captured Izium and Lyman, as well as other important logistics centers, making any Russian counterattack from the north of the Donbass much more difficult. Meanwhile, Russian army continues to suffer heavy losses. In the last few days, Russian forces lost an average of more than 500 soldiers, and on some days more than 700 soldiers were neutralized. In addition, the Kremlin continues to publish many false reports. There are also reports of loss of life among the lies. Russia's defense ministry said 6,000 Russians were neutralized in September. This is an absurdly low estimate, and Ukrainian military believes the Russians have lost 88,000 soldiers. More than nine months of war had depleted the ammunition stocks of Ukrainian and Russian armies. As a result, Kiev and Moscow are turning to their allies to replenish their arsenals and continue their operations. The violence of the war is increasing day by day. If Vladimir Putin continues to rule Russia, his war may continue for at least another year.